She is a real uh, source of information for Social Security. You have Medicaid, Medicare, ask forms. I can't tell you the people that call me that the passport report has expired. We know who to call. So call me. And I'll put you on know, the back of my card is all the, the different people. But if you have a problem, give me a call because I enjoy, I enjoy serving. I will tell you a few things about what's going on in Washington, D.C. Many of you probably already know it. Um, and then get into the question and answers. I was telling Judy, I, I like question and answers. There's no question off limits. If you got a question, ask it to me. If I don't know it, I'll find out. Um, of course, the, the, and by the way, I'm a Homeland Security and Oversight Committee. And Homeland Security has probably been one of the most interesting committees I've been on. The Oversight Committee, typically you have, you, you, you call people that, uh, that you need to find things out from. We haven't been that busy with this administration, but Homeland Security has been, been very interesting. Uh, what I'll be dealing with when I get back to Washington, D.C., y'all all know about the shootings. We will be hit with a rash of gun control legislation. That's what we'll be on, what the, the administration will, will be pushing. Uh, I'll be very frank, I was very unhappy with his comments. He started off with, I think right, with prayer and understanding, which we all, our heart goes out to everybody that's, that was killed, particularly the, the 19 children. Who would, have, who, who would have thought in America we would have school shootings like this? Uh, buddy, the law enforcement here, Buddy, I want to thank you for what you're doing. All of us, stand up. Buddy's been law enforcement. A true patriot. Uh, he was with Rock Hill PD for a long time. Fearless in what he's doing. But I just want to thank you for, for coming out. But we'll be uh, we'll be having a rash of uh, legislation uh, to basically uh, legislate guns. I'm not for that, folks. Uh, the, the media asked me today. But the big buzz is you know we want to. Uh, What's your position on assault rifles? I said, define a assault rifle. Yeah. Define that for me. Uh, you get a nine block and put, uh, put load it with different guns, uh, different bullets, and you know, kill a lot of people. I said, what we have in this country that's a problem. Uh, it's evil going on. Uh, it's mental illness. Yeah. Yeah. It's weak, uh, weak consequences. Yeah. Uh, you go into any store in Rock Hill and probably Fort Bill. Uh, at Home Depot, they will let people come in and rather than confront them, they let them go. They can walk out. Criminals know this. Uh, my response on all the TV shows today were, you know, they asked Congress, what are you going to do? So what, what makes sense is find out how the guy got in. He just walked in. Um, find out uh, what you can do to solve that problem. And just like any business or any homeowner, you secure your house. Whether it's with alarms, whether it's with uh, you know, locked doors, double bolts, all that, uh, we need to find out why that why he was just able to, to walk. And you need to find out um, is a resource officer available. Uh, you wouldn't think you would need it in elementary school, but you do now. Um, so, but be expecting the next uh, two to three weeks, we'll be getting a rash of those background checks. I bought guns recently. You go through a background check. Have you been convicted of a crime? Have you been you know, dishonored with just discharged from the military? You go through a list of those. If you check yes, you don't get a gun. And so uh, they will be politicizing it, and I think it's very unfortunate. Um, we are uh, the, the baby uh, formula crisis. It is a crisis. They knew about this administration, uh, was aware of it last year. Mid-year in 21, you had a 10% reduction, which is normal for stock shelves with baby food. Uh, when it got to be the end of 21, they had right at 36, 38%. Um, folks, nothing was done about it. And when you ask the, the people that know, a lot of it was through Abbott, uh, the Abbott company, which made 50% of the baby food. Uh, they had shut down a plant and has not been opened up. We've written letters 
to expedite the approval process. And I think they'll be getting it back, back online, but it's going to take a while. The other part, you've got ships that are nine miles out uh, from unloading ships. You would think if we could put a man on the moon, can we not unload ships? Uh, and it has to do with labor unions, a lot of it. Um, gas prices, y'all are paying, you're seeing what, what it is on the, um, this is only going to go higher. Uh, we are buying gas from OPEC, which is 15 countries, Iraq, Iran, Russia, Venezuela, the countries that don't like us. Uh, and, you know, he, he, he's, this administration's tone deaf to have it all, he's on pipeline, you know about that being shut down. Uh, important oil through pipes from Canada, they shut everything down in Alaska. Uh, I fully expect to see eight, nine dollar gas if we can get it. That's what we look at. Uh, he's completely sold out to the far left. I haven't seen too many battery operated trucks that are loaded that are stocking their shelves. I haven't seen too many battery or solar panel airplanes. This administration has completely forgotten that. Uh, and it's affecting everything. You look at the energy in this country. It takes 20 million barrels of energy per day. And we were exporting energy. We were exporting energy and making, and, and making money on all of it. Plus having $2.50, 80 cent gas, depending on the octane. Uh, that's nowhere to be found now. We, we, can, we can ask and write letters all we want. Uh, it's just not going to happen. He's not going to do it. So it's going to, inflation is here for a while. The empty shelves. My cousin, who I had a conversation with yesterday, uh, <coughs> produces a uh, house array for chickens, turkeys. Guess what they can't get? Corn to feed the poles. Corn. Uh, so what are you going to do? He said, I don't know. He said, um, we don't know we can try to supply wheat, but folks don't like wheat. And my family grew up in the farming business in eastern North Carolina. But that's uh, across the line. Um, I mean, everything is being throttled back. Uh, Andy Biggs, who I serve, I'm in the Freedom Caucus, a group of conservatives. Uh, Andy Biggs, you probably see on TV a lot, Mark Meadows. Uh, they're canceling leases with copper mines uh, in Arizona, nickel. Uh, and they're using as an excuse that, again, the environmentalists, there's a rare tree on, on a particular copper mine. Uh, the problem is, it's where they're mining it is out in the desert. There are no trees. But, you know, who can think this stuff up? Who, in a year and a half ago, thought, thought this stuff would be so the bottom line, you will see more empty shelves, you will see inflation, it cannot keep going. Folks, uh, spending is completely out of control. Uh, I voted against the 40 billion uh, for Ukraine. But we can get, get, get this, get this. I got when I got to Washington, I guess it was last Monday, at three o'clock on my desk was the bill, 40 billion. Now, $40 million, I think, is a lot of money. We didn't have time to look at it. Nothing is going through regular committee. In other words, the debates are not there. Uh, he says he's stopped working with the other side, meaning Republicans. He never started. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it's very frustrating to see the country being run by, it's not him, it's the cabal. I don't know exactly. People ask me all the time, who's running? He can't answer questions. He won't, will not go to a town hall meeting. He will not go to a press conference. Um, it's a cabal of, to be honest with you, socialists. And we, we got we to fight on it. We really do. Uh, and I could go down the line on, on things that we're dealing with. Um, you know, you saw what happened in Afghanistan with the Americans. Corey Miller, and I hadn't looked to see if he won or not, but he was a Green Beret, um, decorated veteran. And I met him at a conference in Florida. He was one of the ones that took individual flights to Afghanistan on his own to rescue stranded Americans. And I was talking to him. I said, "What is your biggest? What was your biggest problem?" He, he organized the people, paid for it. He had green seals of people with him. Guess who he said the biggest threat he faced? Being shot down. Guess where? 
They move. State Department. The State Department. I said, well, they're going to shoot you down. He said, yeah. I said, what are you going to do? He said, I told him, go to hell. He said, shoot me down. He said, I'm just, you know, and that's the kind of thing we're dealing with. It's almost like it's a internal overtake. Uh, and, you know, you know to, 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 you know, for the banning that's taking place. Uh, I was one of the ones that uh, were out front of the Supreme Court, frontline doctors. We were talking, this has been, I guess, a year and a half ago when COVID came out, talking about the benefits of a doctor's support. A MD, she had an MD, she wasn't some quiet. Let's talk about the benefits of hydroxychloroquine uh, on COVID patients. They can this. And so there's something, it's something evil going on in this country. Uh, and it's all across the board. But, um, you know, I was talking to a big group the other day, and he said, give us some hope. I said, yeah, I'll give some hope. I think people are now engaged. Um, I think people that are calling our office for the first time, people that have been apolitical. And this is what's happening in this country. It's not Democrat, and it's not Republican. It's un American. It's what's going on. And so, you know, it's, it's a, a peak. the good news is people are now involved. I'm seeing more people, good people, put their name on the line and run for, run for house and there's no seat that's unimportant from your school board member to your city council, county council, state house. You need to get them in here just like y'all are doing with me and, uh, and, and quiz people, ask people what on particular things, uh, how they vote, why they vote, because that's the American process uh, and it's just, it hasn't been done but I think it's going to be done now. Um, I do think that if we don't, if we don't at the midterms, if we don't get out and vote uh, and pick a candidate, we have some great candidates one running, then we will go over that cliff uh, as far as financially. What can you do when you're broke? Very little. Our military, you talk to the, our military personnel, it's at this lowest ebb as far as money going to where it needs to go. And our military, it's kind of like our police, our border patrol. Um, they're pretty much deflated. I've been to the border twice. If I took y'all there, you would be shocked at what you, what you would see. I probably would go in another uh, month. But everybody's coming in. We, we've got over 280,000 uh, catch, 280,000 people, illegals that were caught last month. Under the Trump administration, 10,000 was a lot. We're going to have uh, in Title 42, which was the uh, law that allowed Border Patrol agents put them, not let them in, put them back. Um, they're letting that expire purposely. Everything this administration is doing is by design, and it's, by, it's, it's purposely done. And I think it's evil. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we've read probably, I don't know whether many of you saw the different hearings, but pick one. Uh, May August. Uh, oh, the guy swears the border is secure. My question was, was it, if it's secure, please define what's unsecure. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty simple question. We'll have uh, an average diesel border patrol uh, numbers. They have no reason to, to say different. Probably four to 500,000 per month. Let me, let me put that into perspective. South Carolina and Clemson State imposed about 79,000 people. You'll have that five times per month coming into this country. Think of, of uh, you know, Buddy Davini trying to stop a car of people that don't speak the language, you have no way of knowing what they're in, into. Um, you know, and, and don't think we're immune. We're all border states. The night patrol we went on, we caught a member, he's 14 years old, a gang member, uh, basically was. Pretty brazen on some of the things he said. This is what's coming. Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. So we're all a border state now. Um, and it's a uh, it's very frustrating, but the, the good news is I think good people are running. I think they're waking up. The Loudoun County moms who I met, uh, which changed the course of history of Virginia, uh, by, and I, I 
I was talking to them, sorry, two, two mothers. I said, how did you do it? They said, well, we just went to, we were tired of it, and went to a school board meeting, and that was the one where the father whose daughter was raped by a man claiming to be a woman going into the bathroom. And uh, he got thrown out, but she said, we just weren't going to quit. We just, <clears throat> and it changed history for Virginia. Virginia elected a conservative governor, uh, and a conservative uh, lieutenant governor. And in fact, I'm going to try to get Winston Sears down here. Marine, great girl, uh, African-American. I just heard her speak. She came to our three talks. And she, she's, I would love for y'all to hear her. And by the way, uh, their, uh, Bob's daughter is my, used to be my schedule. Um, Hal and does a great job. They came from we got that from New Jersey. <laughs> 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 uh, no, I, you know, and, and I tell people everywhere I go, if let's say if we don't do what we have to do, uh, if we lose America, where do we go? What country do we go to? <clears throat> I'm tired of all these people tearing America down that have have no. It's only negative. We need out hear some positive things about this country. And we've got to get back to uh, building America up, uh, getting a financial house in order, uh, supporting our military, and get the priorities in place. And it, it's going to be us. And you're going to have to, every dollar spent in Washington there is some group that's proactive with it. And so it's a service. Uh, now more than ever, we need you. And I'm convinced the politicians are going to get it done. It's going to have to come from the bottom up from everyday people like the Loudoun County mothers getting involved. Um, we've written on election security. Um, we've written a number of letters to and so, Rocky, South Carolina was one of the states that got all this so-called free money. We're, tra we're tra tracking it down as far as we're um, But that's kind of a rundown. Uh, I'm very optimistic. Um, we're going to fight. Uh, we're going to vote right meaning conservative, uh, and uh, it's a, uh, Joe, if you got the picture, let me show that. Uh, here's, the good, but, uh, that's what we're seeing, folks. That's what we're seeing. And this is part of the, this is on steroids now, since we took this picture. It's going to be uh, on steroids. And you know, we will see uh, some very bad sites in Fort Mill and Rock Hill when they come here. They're coming here because this is this, this area has jobs and it's, it's affluent. <clears throat> if we don't fight against this and get to pay for police up and be an advocate for police, uh, I'm more in danger of getting shot in Washington, D.C. I am on the roughest street in Fort Mill. Uh, the police, are, they're, they're down several hundred. Uh, it's just a marvelous. But, you know, they've been so loud, and they've been so, uh, the, the left has just taken over the, the media. And we've got to be a pro, and I told the chief when I walked in, now's a great time to get to pay up the police to do what they do, to go to places that they do. Yes, y'all, you know, the, the city council and county council uh, funds the police, different police departments. I would go to the city council and go to groups, get a group of four or five, and, uh, and, and voice your opinion. Now, what's the pay? What is it? And, and let's, let's be proactive with this. Believe me, they deserve it. Uh, that, this is what is going to protect this country. And if it keeps like it's going, but ask people who are living in Portland, Oregon, uh, they're leaving. And folks, I'm in the real estate business. A, every time a Target or a store that uh, loses money, gets robbed, gets broken up, uh, the stores, if they don't make the profits, they leave. So it's the customer, it's the people that live here. We want to keep good stores here. Fort Mill has them. But you've got to have a strong uh, police force, and you've got to have consequences. Yes. Yes. Amen. For every pastor, I show a picture of this. Uh, this administration with the taxes that's coming down the pipe, 
Uh, thank God for Joe Manchin. He stopped uh, the latest boondog with taxes that are going up. Uh, check your, you know, your IRAs, your 401ks. Uh, it's not doing too well. But he wants to tell you, profit is a bad thing for this administration. And uh, churches, I tell we ought to be telling every pastor, how much money, if, if your donations, if your congregation has less money to give to you, how much expansion are you going to be able to do? The churches are under attack. And the pastors need to, that's one thing, when Winston, if I get Searles down here, uh, she's big, she's a great Christian, and it's now time to activate the pastors. Uh, to, to one, teach the Bible, and two, to take a position on what's going on. Uh, if not, they're going to end up just like this. It's no, it's no, re, it's no uh, coincidence that they left the gambling bars open, shut the churches down, the okay. congregation. That's literally happened. Freedom of speech. If anything's going to do in this country, it's freedom of speech. That's why I need you to exercise your voice. The ban, uh, we're going to try to do away with Section 230, which allows us to sue uh, mass media, the Googles, the Facebooks, uh, the Twitters. Thank God for Elon Musk. <laughs> Again, that's the other good thing about this is people now seeing this. Um, I don't care what the news media does, tries to tell you. Uh, they see it because they feel it. Just like all of you are feeling just what I've talked about. Now, this is not me. <laughs> this is our country hanging by thread. This is how close we are. And folks, we can't, we got too, too much... Uh, uh, America is a great country. It's, it's not perfect, but to, to not fight for our children, uh, your grandchildren, my grandchildren, we get it's on our watch. And I will close with this. What's, what's the church here? Said there'd be a time when doing your best isn't good enough. Uh, you got to do what's required. Each one of each one of us has to do what's, what's required. And I think we will. We always have in America, and uh, hopefully we'll do it now. Now. I would be glad to take any question that you have. Yes, sir. Give us the status on the Supreme Court leak. <laughs> Supreme Court leak. Uh, Judge Roberts, and by the way, y'all, if you didn't head follow that, the brief of Roe v. Wade, the Dobbs case is referred to, that would reverse Roe v. Wade was leaked out. Intentionally. Um, we don't know who. Uh, Roberts wants to have the investigation done by the House uh, investigator. That's not going to do it, though. you got to have forensic. you got to have... He did have a good idea. And Roberts has changed. Washington has changed him for some reason. But he did make one good comment. that He had everybody, all the staffers, sign a thing that it wasn't them. So when they catch you, they really put the effort behind it, get the professionals in there, they find out who's doing it. I think they will. I think it shook them up and up. And I think the left wants, wants the intimidation that's going on. It's legal, illegal, folks, for them to, to to go in front of their house and threat. Uh, but I want to have a mirror curve. Again, it's consequences. So uh, time will tell if they really find out who it is. I don't think, I think now, with them being threatened. Uh, a lot of the press didn't tell me what they're doing. I mean, they say it's peaceful protest. They're tearing up cars. I mean, I can, uh, my phone, when I, when I got out of the car, every street is being shut down uh, someday for protests. It's not peaceful. Um, but we'll find out. If, if, they really, if it doesn't come out, then they're, they're not some, something to stop them. Yes, ma'am. Health organization is talking about this World International Treaty for Pandemics. So, Governor DeSantis just came out and said, We don't really care what the news does, we ain't doing it in Florida. 
So what is South Carolina's position on it? Yours? And I mean, I know you can't talk to Governor McMaster, but what is the general feeling in South Carolina about this kind of thing with the WHO and all this pandemic? International thing, digital, you know, uh, COVID and digital IDs and all that other nonsense. The question is about WHO, what South Carolina going to do? The Santas uh, is that a lone state that they weren't going to participate statewide. Uh, the Santas is a leader. Uh, Ron DeSantis has done more than I served with him for seven months, and he's not your typical. If, he were, if you had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him, he's not confident. I mean, he doesn't like that. He's a policy wonk, uh, Yale graduate, baseball player. He's a great man. <coughs> he's done wonders at, for, as for Florida with his policies. Uh, and he, does, he told us, a small group, he said, you know, I don't do a poll. And I like this. He said, I just let her rip. Now, here's my uh, WHO is a, a forest or organization. Tetris is a crook. Uh, he's in bed with China. Uh, they're actually, by just going along with it, uh, having it where they can uh, set up surveillance. If, it, if you and I are caught coughing, that's, that's serious. They can report you. Uh, and that's what they do in communist China. If a country, uh, they're taking, they normally have to go through a process and the U.S. Uh, has got a virus that could be a pandemic. You have to have proof. Each country does. They're taking that away. Um, uh, the Biden administration is going to go along with them. We support this 194 nations in, in the World Health Organization. We, we pay for half of it. And I didn't know until I got to Congress. You know why that is? They, they, take, they take our your tax dollars, my tax dollars, and put it in these uh, these vague uh, organizations, you would buy a toaster if you saw how the contract would work. You really would. That's how they pay off the different people. That's the graph and the greed. Tetris is a complete, uh, he sold out, but this administration has to go along with it. South Carolina needs to take a role just like DeSantis is doing. The states form the federal government, not vice versa. Yes. The federal government yes. form the states. Yes. Uh, we got to be loud and bold. Uh, you need to uh, write the two senators and the congressmen. Uh, you know, was like, you know, anybody that tells me that the WHO is, is a good investment, you know, I, it stops. The conversation stops. I, I can't help it. Uh, it it's just it's so baffling. But you need to stay with on Lindsey Graham. You need to stay with Tim Scott. To help your opinion. Your voters. Um, uh, we'll see how it works out. Hopefully, enough people will rise up. Hopefully, enough people will put a stop to it. Uh, but, you know, not the, uh, well, what they did in Ukraine in negotiating, Biden never wanted to be Ukraine. He stopped, he slow walked everything from the start. And WHO, he speaked this up. Uh, all the crises we've got in this country need to take off. Uh, and basically, the rubber stamp protect us in the whole China regime. It's, it's so important. Other question? Yeah. Um, when the Republicans had the power a number of years ago, they really didn't do much. And if they take the power back after the midterms, I don't believe McConnell and McCarthy are strong enough or willing to put the effort and uh, strength and courage to stand up to the Republic, uh, Democrats, big business, big tech. Um, what's your take on that? The question was, you know, if, and I think we, the Republicans will take over the midterms. I think we'll take the Senate. And when we had the all branches of government prior to uh, when we had all three branches, we didn't do anything. You're exactly right. Um, and you know, that's where you only, in the business arena, and, or the military, or any organization, you're only as good as your weakest person. We just got some weak people up there, folks. Uh, they, they are up there to gain the system. If ever we need term, term limits, it's now. Yes. It's yes. Yes. Uh, the problem. So, 
and I don't care whether you're Democrat or Republican, they just need to come home and live under some of these laws that you made. I've got a bill up, and we've got over 100 co sponsors on it. Um, three terms in the House, six years, and two terms in the Senate, 12. Now, uh, would that pass? No. But let's get it to the table. And what Howie Rich is doing from New York is fabulous. He got a lot of congressmen, so called conservatives, Republicans, that signed a pledge. You know, I agree with term limits. And what he does, I go to him, and I do it every week. We're slowly getting our numbers up. I go to him and said, uh, you know, you signed the pledge, can you honor it and sign up it? And you get a lot of words. A lot of, some have signed, some did not. I tell how he gets a billboard right in the closest to their house as he can get. He put uh, Gary Palmer and Nick on his, his uh, way. <laughs> Guess how many we've got to change their mind? A lot. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it's uh, it's all about people. we got to hold them accountable. Yeah. We're at the end of the runway, though. What's different now? 30 trillion folks are just surprised. It's, that's they're stretching it. I mean, they're not telling the whole truth when it's just 33. Pick a fund, Social Security. It's bankrupt in 2035. That's not that far off. Highway Transportation Fund. It's, it, they're bankrupt in that. I mean, everything is running in the Red Postal Service. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's got to start somewhere. The good news about you know who we get in office now matters. Anything's better than plus. Well, any position to challenge McCarthy. Let me tell you how it works in DC. He spent the he values that job more than a lot. I mean, to be honest with you, he raises a pile of money. People don't realize if you're honest, you lose money in politics. I mean, he cannot go up there. Uh, and and uh, uh, Biden had. Three and four houses. When he was in the Senate, we all make the same thing, 174,000. How do you pay tax? You're down to eight. Now tell me how you can buy these luxury houses, mansions. You can't do it. The math does not work. Now, you get a vote. Yeah. It's as simple as falling off this chair. Now, you, if you're a crook, you can do it. Um, but McCarthy raises money for all these candidates, and he had me in his office. I'm on Homeland Security and um, an oversight. Financial services is where I need to be. It's considered an A to B because you deal with banking uh, regulations, you deal with the financial uh, hub of the country. That's kind of my background. I was on bank board for 20 some years. I had to get off because of Congress, but uh, it's an A to B. You get the big, all the banks give, the donors give. And uh, my comment to him, and see, I, I've been asking for it for five years. Uh, and it just hadn't come because I caused a lot of trouble up there. And his very comments were, uh, do you want to commit? I said, yeah, I do, but it's not worth selling my voting for. He said, we just not pick fights. I said, <clears throat> fine fights. I had I hadn't picked fights. I just, I'm not going to uh, go. And I pointed out he voted for the $1.3 trillion package that he did. And a lot of Republicans did too. He voted for the, uh, uh, the Bill Back Better which we didn't even read. The 40, he voted for the 40 billion to Ukraine, which he didn't read. Uh, and I, I don't get it. So I said, look, if it's, uh, if, if I can do a lot of good on that committee, but it's not worth it. And everybody, and I'm not just the only one doing that, other people are doing it too. We had, I mean, there's a group of us, Freedom Caucus, we should have 35 or 40 people. We really don't care. Um, we'll do what we do, what, uh, what, what it takes to in our minds to get back. We will have leverage. If we, um, our, our caucus, and he doesn't like us saying this, but he had to get 218 for speaking. Uh, he's not going to get any Democrats. I mean, Pelosi's will break their knees if <laughs> <laughs> Democrat. But 218, he's he got to have a freedom caucus. If it's, if it's a 20, but if it's, if it's 18 or less swing in the Margin, you know, we got a three or four vote. Uh, you know, Republicans are short three or four. If we get 20 or less, we'll have leverage and we can put some demands on the party that he has to do because uh, we're not going to get my vote. And a lot of us, you know, will risk 
schedule, to be honest with you, to have somebody, but the speaker's in the most powerful position in Washington, D.C., more powerful than anybody. Uh, he will be a step up from, from uh, Pelosi, but we've got camps in this country. If I, uh, uh, Ashland's not going to correct me. We've got to have mass, a mass change of pace to get this country back on. But is anybody uh, in the wings? You know, Jim Jordan ran before. We got the uh, Jordan real estate. We got the uh, Outlander Farm. Uh, those of us who did got punished. I mean, it goes with the territory. But uh, there is, is it somebody else? There is, if it's, if you see a 15, um, 15 uh, margin for the Republicans, uh, it will shock you who has agreed to do it. And he's not even in Congress. Not even in Congress. You don't have to be in Congress. Oh, no. <laughs> two people that all y'all, I'm not going to tell them who it is, but uh, two people that you would be ecstatic with, if, if, and, and they both will. Um, but you, you're whistling in the wind if, you know, if it's at 30, uh, 25 or more, we don't have, we don't have the leverage. Um, but we'll have the leverage for that. Two people, this group, conservatives would be ecstatic if he would change the country. It wouldn't take long. At all to turn this country Other questions? Yes, sir. My, my history has always been logistics and supply chain. We all know what's happening now with baby formula, shelter, and the Shanghai and China has been shut down for months. And unfortunately, they make a lot of things that we use. Is there anything or anyone in government? thinking far enough ahead that we need to get quick approval for Abbott to reopen, quick approval for plants to be built. So we can start making things because, and this is my opinion, supply chain issues in the next six to nine months are even going to be worse because China's been shut down. You know, 26 million people in Shanghai have been, you know, quarantined for months. That means they haven't been to the factory. It means they aren't making anything, which means there's nothing coming over. So is anyone thinking ahead of what we can do in the next 12, 24, 36 months to avoid some of these shortages? Sadly, with this administration, no. I mean, we've written over 20 letters, uh, and we've written on, on the supply chain uh, issue, and nothing. Um, it's, it's so frustrating. I mean, and you, you understand that it's, it's going to take a while to ramp up if, 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 if you had somebody that understood it. I mean, Biden's answer was, what is it, $20 billion he wanted to put to uh, jumpstart the industries and give, give money to the apps of the world and others. That's not the way to do it. You get the ships unloaded. Uh, you get the, the formula and the different products in it, whatever he can get. Uh, it's not coming out of China now. Because they, we would have them in a real bad position good for America if we would, but he's in bed with it. So I don't know, know that person, to be honest with you. Uh, my, it's like everything else. Uh, they're incompetent. Uh, they, you know, and it, it's, it's every, every agency. Sad, sad. Uh, Kamala Harris is kind of a, I mean, she's kind of a, why don't you uh, impeach Biden? I said, who do you think you get? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's embarrassing. I'm not answering the question. At least, at least Biden's got a, he's got an excuse. He's got a mention. But and he's never been that smart even in his prime. Uh, her. She's, uh, she, she's, she's the best. Yes, she is. All right, go ahead, Anthony. Yes, sir. No, I used to do a, a, a search and be diligent about who I'm going to vote for. And, but uh, the way things are going now, if it's a Republican I'm voting for, them, I don't care what their policies are anymore. And I think that's a lot of people feel the same way. You, you just don't know what you're going to get with some of these Democrats because if they come in, I'll say one thing to get elected and do something else. You know, I think it was uh, Lucy Churchill used to say, if you're in your 20s and you're not a liberal, you don't have a heart, 
if you're in your forties and you're not conservative, you don't have a brain. <laughs> I don't think there's a brain in, in all of the White House. If now they can put them all together, they can look for one brain. So I vote Republican no matter what. And then I will say to the good people, we have a we have a uh, devotion Ash, um, you know, good, good testimony. We have a Republican one day and a Democrat the next. And um, what what amazes me is they'll get up and give these great testimonies and then vote to kill a child. I mean, I don't understand that. And go lockstep with a with a speaker who is obviously corrupt in every aspect. And so, um, but no, I, you know, you're, you're right. And I'm helping, I'm giving money. I mean, I've got, I don't have a primary. I've got two Democrats running against, against me in the, in the general. But I'm helping other candidates. Uh, you know, uh, funding, we need, I, we need help. I can't give enough money to the good candidates. I've got so many great military guys that are stepping up, uh, like Corey Mills, like um, all over the country. I mean, we got good business people that are running. So, but when you get into Congress, you do away with the business. It's the quickest way to lose money out there. So, <laughs> you lose money. Now, I'd make a lot of money if I was flat out crook, but, uh, but I need y'all to get it. And I don't, I'm not bashful anymore. Uh, I'm giving people, you know, and, and I tell people, we're going to lose our freedom, totally. Absolutely. The ability to go play golf, to go on vacations. We lose it. This group wants to control you. Uh, you all see what she does on the house floor. I was one of the ones that just would not wear a mask. She's fine. She's fine. We're going through mag, mag, what is it, mag, magnometers where you shoot. It's, it's power to see if I've got a gun and go shoot somebody. When does that happen? And it's, you know, the public doesn't care about that. I don't care about that. I go through that. They don't. Uh, Fresh them like they first got us. I mean, you literally have to go through and if your keychain chain goes off, you have to hit the phone. <clears throat> you know, and I told the officers, I said, don't you be glad that this jump is over with, that you don't have to put up with this. Uh, but no, you're right, and uh, I, that's the bright side. I think we're going to get some good candidates. I really do, and I think they're going to win. Um, so, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yes, ma'am? Why do the Democrats run the block? Uh, most of them have been in government all their lives. Um, most of them have never had to do without a paycheck. Most of them are recruited. Let me give you an example. AOC was recruited in New York. Uh, the, the, the powers that be, the corporations. I now know why lobbyists are at all these meetings. We get a lot of money off of them. Uh, politicians that give up their careers and, and uh, Washington or lots because they can make a pile of money. They get a percentage. But uh, she auditioned. Um, and she bought them some. That's what they've done a good job of. She lives in a, I sleep in my office. Uh, now I can afford to get a, a apartment set of $2,500. I'm not going to do that. I'm just I'm not doing it. Uh, she lives in the nicest apartment complex. Probably 3000 every 30 days. Uh, but they are on the, you know, they, they just bought them so. And that, the Democrats, uh, if they'd ever been in the business arena, um, they would understand that you know, everybody, you don't have to agree all the time. Uh, we, we have some lot knockdown drag outs in our caucus, in particular our Freedom Caucus, uh, which is great. But uh, they vote in the block, but they like lemmings. They talk big. Uh, they got a meeting on their side. They do a better job of PR than we do. The bills that, I can't tell you the bills that, uh, that are titled in a good way, but are complete frauds with what they're doing with your tax money. That's why my no voting record uh, is high, because it should be voted on. It should never be wrong. They've got, I'll be voting on a bill, if they bring it up, uh, that they get this. If it gets to be 80 degrees outside for a government employee, you have to stop what you're doing uh, by law and provide water, uh, a rest period, 
And when I heard about it last week, I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's the thing. And so, um, and I think the other thing too, before you get in politics, you should have had your accolades somewhere else. Before you get into politics, either Mr. Football or we Miss Pumpkin Patch, I don't care what it is, get your, get your accolades. This is a small chapter in the book. A lot of these people, it's the whole book. Yeah. And it's uh, that's why they say it doesn't so long. Uh, aside from gaming the system, because I think they're, like I say, it's easy up there. It's not fair to tackle. Yes, ma'am. I have another question. You know, I've seen that companies like um, BlackRock have been going into different that they're going in and buying up whole communities in real estate. I don't know if on your side of the federal government if there could be some kind of oversight or restrictions of these companies coming in, and even with Gates, buying all this um, farm, all that sort of stuff. Or China coming in and buying You know, China owns Smithfield. What? Company. You know, that's our core company. They sold out to the Chinese. They take that away any day they want, right? They can take the court and come that. So how can we stop certain things like that? Is it on a local level or is it more on the federal level? How can you stop talking black rock buying up land? Uh, how can you stop that? China has infiltrated this country uh, where it's, it's really scary. Uh, what you can do on your 401ks and on your mutual funds, go and ask uh, how many China funds uh, do you have or have ties through China that really go back. Ask the question to your stockbroker, make him show it to you. Um, I was sitting beside Mike Pompeo probably a year ago, and uh, we were talking about China. And he said, Norman, you know you're on the list. I said, listen, for what? I don't have that much power. I haven't been there that long. Well, no A committees. He said, you're on, you're on a uh, check, check you're with your district director about how many times the FBI has called you. And you know how many times they call me in one year? Twelve times. You know why? Because there's a firm in Fort Mill, South Carolina, that I thought was for economic development. It was a Chinese firm. They were there just to get information. I mean, that was real. And I said, I asked my district director, why did you tell me this? He said, well, I just didn't think anything about it. They were coming quite quizzy. But that's how much they infiltrate this country. Uh, look at the farmland they're buying all over uh, America. Uh, they're buying in Oklahoma particularly, where there's a uh, product that they can, they can buy, uh, whether it's through land or by 51% of the different companies. They do it. It's all about money, folks, and control. The Democrat Party now is made up of those people that do it the bidding for. Uh, you got some Republicans too, but not to the extent that they are. But the way you get involved, man, um, ask questions about your particular situation. Uh, look at it. Um, when, when, when it comes up where you hear of, of different groups buying big tracts of land, uh, it was shocked you use involved those people. Another question. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm thinking more fundamentally, you know, this country is too polarized. Mm -hmm. It's too polarized. You know, you have the Democrats, you have the Republicans, and you know, the independents are kind of in the middle, I guess. What is being done to get the country back together like it used to be? Well, and that, that, that responsibility really has to come from people, but the people in Congress, Senate, that needs to be addressed somehow. And I, I know it can be addressed. If there is a will, there is a will. The question was, country kind of polarized, why can't you basically get together? Am I phrase it right? Well, yeah, we, we, need, we need some consistency in what the goal is. Yeah, but if I could, if I could take any one of y'all to Washington, D.C., um, it's like getting on I 77 and you have one group wants to go, go north, you have one group wants to go south. There's no in between. How can we change that? People. You got to get people. I don't, to be honest with you, uh, I don't have anything in common with AOC. I don't have anything no, in common no, with no, 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 no
I'm sorry, son. We can't talk. We're, we're too far apart. They, they're so used to gaming the system. Now, it used, you're exactly right. Back in, uh, I think it probably changed when you know when Reagan was there, when Kennedy was there. Kennedy would be a Republican in today's world. Yes, he was. Uh, he was yes, he was. Yes, he but you can talk. Um, because you, you weren't this far extreme. Tell me, over the last two year and a half, this, this administration, the extreme measures that this this country has gone. But I tell you, it's so frustrating for me. I had a, uh, I was at a wedding a week ago. A um, young man, probably 35, a Georgia Tech graduate. Georgia Tech is a good school. Came up to me and said, Congressman, I know your opinion on Trump. You support it. Um, I just don't like it. I said, okay, what What don't you like? Those mean tweets. <laughs> and I said, okay, let me, what do you do? He said he's an engineer. I said, how's your business? Oh, I'm, I'm busy now. I'm, I'm good. I said, have you seen what's happening? Well, what are you paying for gas? Well, yeah. Uh, have you seen the empty shelves? Uh, have you seen what's going on with the military? Have you seen what's going on with the police? I mean, he said, yeah, but uh, I said, aside from his tweets, he, he, and he said, yeah, but he's egotistical. I said, you know, there's no need us to talk anymore. Kind of like, how do you deal with that? I do not know. Now, uh, I've been with Trump three times on Air Force One. I can take any one of them. Uh, does he cuss? Yes. Does he, uh, does he like females? Yes. Does he, um, but I'll tell you this, he loves his country. Yeah. He yeah. loves yeah. America. Yeah. What's shocking to me is you have a smart guy like that who, he's doing well himself, but how about these, these, uh, the, the society that's fixed on fixed incomes? Uh, how about those who can least afford it, that really have no voice? Just went over and said, and I just. But that the only way we're going to get back to talking is is have people who are willing to change what they what we've been doing. What we've done so far is not working. Yeah. Uh, we got to stop it. Yeah. And the only way to do that. Think about it. You know, <laughs> I mean, all not just you. All the people in Congress. I get that. You said all people. Yeah. That's that's where you have to stop. It. Well, I'm going to try to beat most of them if I can. Because <laughs> I can't change. It's, it's that guy I was telling you about. Nice guy that I was telling you about. Educated, good job. But, um, you know, it's, 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 it's so frustrating because he's smart, but he, he's missing. He comes, if you follow me for a week, and it wouldn't take but a week. I love to have liberals in my office, young people. They see it because. People come in. Uh, they understand. Can people in there? Can people visit you up there now? Yeah, y'all can visit. Um, come. Uh, we love My wife does a great job. The White House is still shut down. But you come up, you can tour. I've got a lady uh, who has got her doctor's degree, in effect, for the uh, you know, for all the museums. She understands. She loves it. And would love to take you for a tour. Just call my office, and uh, Allie is can do tours. It's a fabulous place to see. Now I will tell you this: you need to wait the first of the year. Uh, they will have to do something about the police up there, about law enforcement. Washington is shut down for the most part. God help you if you go if you go very many places uh, around Washington D.C. Judy. Is there any hope for those January 6th? Yes. Um, Is there any hope for January 6th? January 6th yes. commission. Yes. That's been the saddest. Uh, that was, that, you're going to find out that was a conspiracy. Uh, that was put up. Uh, Donald Trump didn't sign that. I mean, he, he's, he may have had some overzealous uh, supporters, but they've got people there that were on the inside, FBI agents. Yes. Uh, yeah. who, who made this seem more than it was. I was there. This wasn't an overthrow of the government. This wasn't an overthrow. I mean, yes, for nine hours, we were, they were strong. But it's people that, if, if that's where the FBI is a great organization, but it's been corrupted. But they've got 60 or 58 people who are in, in prison today. If you and I get a traffic ticket, 
we have our day in court. These people, uh, they've got one guy's got, and they won't let you in. Washington's got a lot of different laws than we have. People say, why can't you just get them out? They won't even let you see. Them. That's how far we've gone in this country. And it's got to be changed. Talk to anybody that's in the know in DC that is not scared to tell you. Um, and it's going to take. Does anybody ask? Does anybody ask Pelosi why they're still in prison? Oh yeah, but she's just like water running off a duck's back. She doesn't care. I mean, to be honest with you, she asked me, "Has anybody asked Pelosi?" But she, she's that lady. Like, so I told her her middle name on the organization that she's on. Real quick. We take the House, we take the Senate. What the hell are we going to do to reverse the situation? Unlike this gentleman, I think it's time to bring karma. I think it's time to expose the Democratic Party. I think it's time to expose well, the and subpoena first. I think it's time to expose the Swalwells, throw these people off the committees like the Pelosi did. Is McCarthy going to have the guts to do a damn thing? The question is, uh, are there going to be consequences uh, for those in power throwing people off? Make consequences for Swalwell and others. Uh, that's going to be one of our um, negotiation points. The good news, we're going to have a lot of hearings. We're going to call Pelosi is the one that would not let the National Guard come in. Yeah. Pelosi is the one. So why should we subpoena that? We're going to subpoena her. She did do he it. will do that. I mean, she uh, will do that. And the good news, Every committee will have subpoena power. Uh, every committee. And so we're going to get this from, we're going to expose it to the, to the nation. But now when I say expose it to the nation, y'all turn it on the news. How much do you see CBS, MSNBC? Uh, how much coverage do you, I mean, I see every day, every time, every uh, week I fly to Washington, you see CNN. I mean, it's a joke, folks. The reality versus what they're reporting is just not fair. Like with Trump. The stuff they were putting on here, uh, it's amazing he made as much headway in America as he yes. did. But it's just not true. But now, like the guy I told you about, I would never convince him. And when you say rigged elections, uh, good God, uh, read the book Rigged. Read, uh, we're, we're doing studies now that's going to show, a lot's going to come out if it ever comes out about drop boxes, about uh, the reason that the Democrats put the bill up which federalized all my elections, uh, took away voter ID. The whole thing, they don't want photo voter ID. And that's, I mean, there's no reason why Florida can get it right, get the, the vote in at a particular day, uh, November 3rd, and North Carolina's got to have 10 extra days. It's a joke. We got to, we've had so many bullets coming up us, up at us, and so, and so far we've, we've stopped. But, uh, that's why it's so important for the Senate and the House. And we're not perfect, but we're going to stop a lot of things. Yes, ma'am. So I'm just wondering, what are we going to face the issues of voter fraud? The National Suicide Prevention Act, which was developed, uh, 2,000 mules, with video footage, government video footage, of people stuffing the boxes. Not just people, but people who by their cell phones were identified to be those who were paid to write Black Lives Matter and, I mean, really seedy people, right. and actually could tell where they went on a given night to as many as 25 boxes. Question is, when are we going to address voter fraud? That's another good ray of light. I'll tell you, we're doing that. Um, Georgia passed some meaningful legislation. The, the, it's not perfect, it didn't go quite far enough. Here in South Carolina, we've got meaningful legislation. Uh, in fact, I've got a, uh, we're getting to the bottom. Zuckerberg put 400,000 in South Carolina. And we've written four letters. And any of you that can, can help me, I mean, we, we've requested that the Election Commission tell us where exactly the 400,000 went, what precincts. I mean, think about this. $400,000, if they, if they, if some of the, the precincts got 40,000, 50,000, that's a lot of money. How many pencils can you buy? I mean, this. They gave us a rundown. We're going. We're asking for more, and it's going to take a group of people to go in there. I wanted what we're asking, and just uh, my legislative director just got it to me today. We're asking for the specific person that took the check and the, sp the specific uh, list of equipment that they bought. Where, where? 
and with prices. I mean, it's, it's not that hard. It's just like if, if they spent money, somebody got a check, somebody paid for something, and they paid a price. And it's been hard to get, but that's what I'm doing in South Carolina. And we don't, we've got a pretty honest state. But my, my point is, it should be honest. And what amount of fraud and greed or fraud is acceptable? Zero. So I don't know how much cancer is acceptable. You stop it if you can. We're doing that on our level, and other states are too. The next question is, since this documentation shows that there was voter fraud in key areas where the extra votes made a difference, if it is proven that this election was fraudulent, do we continue to let those who are not entitled to the office continue in office? Uh, if it's proven, uh, like, if you haven't watched 2,000 mules, pull that up. Yes. <clears throat> pull that up and spread it and spread it. It will be banned before long. You're not going to get it. Uh, but but, but uh, is, no, and she's asking, is it going to be consequences? Those that perpetrated the crime, uh, did the boxes, uh, you know, flooded the, the mail, uh, will there be consequences if we push it? If we push it. And I think you've got a group now that will, that will. And it's, I will tell you, it's not easy. Uh, they, judges, who we elect as judges are important. And a lot of judges, I mean, look at the, look at the, look at the ones they elect all, all over the country. South Carolina, we've been okay. Uh, there was one particular judge uh, we didn't like. I called a meeting, and we said uh, he was letting criminals off. And we said, uh, and I called a girl from Columbia, and it was a particular death that took place, and uh, Judge Hall just let the girl, let the guy out, and he went out and killed, killed the, the wife. So we said, we won't get it. And his election was coming up. And I knew we were to get back the minute we left, the minute the meeting was, was over with. He, he accused himself for six months of criminal cases. And he's back on, but my point is, like the Loudoun County moms, all you have to do is show interest in ask questions. And two people with Loudoun County started off. That's what you got the power to do. And I pray and ask you to do that. Yes, sir. Now, uh, with the FBI and Antifa, these people come, they riot. The same people go from city to city to city. Yes. Why isn't anything being done? Why isn't the FBI infiltrating them? Well, maybe they have, but they're not doing anything. You think corrupt? And, you know, I think the FBI has become so corrupted. Yeah. What are you guys going to do about it if you take power? The question was about Antifa and the FBI and how we're going to straighten it out. I think basically mm -hmm. uh, the, the Antifa and Black Lives Matter are there just to intimidate. Yes. Mm -hmm. When a group, uh, and I was I had a meeting, Marsha Taylor, uh, Louis Gomer, and another one went down to the jail to see the January 6th people. Guess who showed up? Antifa? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Black Lives Matter? Uh, when we were banned uh, in Supreme Court, guess who was right behind us? Into the Black Lives Matter. Now, the police don't have the power to do something. Uh, but in Rock Hill, but it knows this, we had a problem with uh, Black Lives Matter showing up on uh, the Marino trial, which was an officer who did his job but was fired. And who showed up? Outsiders from Atlanta. And a group of us are going to express our opinion. Reno got off by a jury because he was right. He, he was doing his job. But uh, it's, it's getting our voice back. The only way we're going to get it back is FBI has been a great agency, but it's been filtered. And so how do you do it? You take the first step and expose it. 2,000 mules does a great job of exposing it. Absolutely. And we got to take it a step further. And there are a lot of other groups that are getting behind it that are exposing other things. Yes, sir. I've got uh, five grandkids in school, and um, I'm concerned I'm, I'm every day that they go to class, that, that they're not going to come home. Every day you hear about a shooting in this school, that school, and at the beginning of, of your, uh, your introduction, right, you, had, you were talking about guns, and, and uh, what I don't understand is, is why the Democrats and Republicans not come together to do something because it, it always comes up that he, that this guy like this character just killed all these kids 
that he bought these coupons, forget about the AR-15 or whatever it is, which he shouldn't have anyway, uh, an 18-year-old kid, but it, it, he, they said he bought his gun legally. Here's an 18-year-old kid with a, with a mental history, and, and it happens, you know, that they, they, they go with it and they, they dig out information on all these people, and this guy had this, and this guy did this, and I, I mean, what kind of background checks are we doing on these people? Have you bought a gun license? Oh, his question was about when you get together on uh, if every day your grandchildren worry about coming home, as I do, and why can't we get together uh, on, I assume you know, you're talking about the, the purchase of guns by 18 year olds, 20 year olds. By anybody. Well, the, the, the difference with this administration, they basically want to take every gun away from you. How do you define it for being a assault rifle? You take a 9 millimeter block, you can put the. the yeah. I mean, right. So they, their intent is to start there, and how do you define it? and take the guns from law-abiding citizens? That's not right. The question, to get to the bottom of it, so that you and I don't have to worry about our grandchildren, is go to uh, Orchard Elementary, uh, go to the other schools, a group of you, and say, we want to walk around, get the principal, and get the resource officers that they have at Elementary, and say, with this same murder, murderer be able to walk in Orchard Elementary and do what he did to kill the 19 people. Uh, why with the, with, with the surveillance and electronics, why can't, how did he get in? Who opened the door? That'd be the first step. Now, mental illness? Uh, I don't know how you deal with that. Uh, the drugs coming across this country is, is going to be a, we have not seen the, the effect opening our borders wide open. Uh, and I normally carry a, thing, a, a little package of uh, sweetener, a sweetener load. And that package of fentanyl will kill 20 to 40,000 people. That package. They're lacing it with, it's just too much money. The gangs are controlling everything in, in, in a lot of states. And it's kind of deep. But what you can do, go to the, a group of you, go to where your grandchild, I, I will do it. Our daughters will do it. We're going to the school. And saying what would prevent this? Uh, you know, they work for us. We don't work for them. We pay salaries. Fifty percent of your taxes, uh, property taxes, go for school. And you got good schools here. But it's up to us. The burden is on us to, to ask those kind of questions. Um, I will. We will not be together with this administration on taking guns away because that's not the answer. Guns don't shoot by themselves. It's the person behind it. And I just strongly. Believe that. How do they buy them? Well, if, if you, I bought them, well, how do they buy them? Um, he, he bought them legally. But he has to do a, you fill out a background check. When you buy a gun, you they give you electronically on a computer pad. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Have you ever uh, been dishonored with discharge from military? All that. If you check yes on those, uh, you can't buy them. It's in place. Now, the HR 8 that the Democrats try to pass, uh, if I, went hunting and, and lent my gun to Buddy, uh, and I was checked, guess what the fine was? $100,000. It did not, they criminalized it. Things like it was, it was chock full of things that just were going to disarm America. We disarm America. It's, it's another death nail in this country of law by itself. I carry a gun everywhere I go. The one in my car, I left it there today. Uh, I'm not, I won't go anywhere without it. Y'all ought to get you to see a weapons permit. Um, because I don't know where we're saying, buddy, I'll tell you. Uh, I mean, what, ask law enforcement. That's the other thing we need to do. Get law enforcement and say, how can we make schools safer? They're the professionals. They, they go places we don't go. They see things we don't see. Ask them. And they'll tell you. And it's not taking guns away or making it uh, so that you can't get it. It's red flag laws or a joke. Law enforcement have to. If I'm suspecting Joe Smith down the street of being a terrorist, I mean, they don't have time to go out there. They're chasing criminals, uh, particularly now, and they got a shortage of them anyway. To partially address this question, the Democrats were against putting cops in the schools. Right. You know, it's common sense. Oh, the children will be traumatized by the sight of a policeman. Really? I mean, come on. He said the uh, Democrats, and they're all in favor of doing, doing away with the police. If you can see their detail, I mean, watch Nancy Pelosi. She's got five officers with 
Yes. A soft line. They, uh, Jim Plyman doesn't get on the plane without a host of volunteers. Now, why is it fair for them? And by the way, your tax dollars are paying for it. Paying for security. And why? I mean, it's just such a double standard. That, that, that's what gets me. If they can afford it. They live in the gay places. They have the security. But uh, they would be the first to come running begging for police if you put them out on the street without security. Uh, Marsh Pat Green has more death threats. I've had death threats. I mean, they, they get by with this. Uh, the, the left does. They weaponize it. Yes, yes, sir. Isn't it true that some of those strictest gun laws are in Chicago? Oh, yeah. That's a good point. The strictest gun laws in Chicago, Illinois. Where, where's the outrage of the children getting shot there? Where is the... I mean, why, what's the difference? Uh, they... I will, I, I will say that the cabal that's running uh, by does pick their, this is a tragic part to politicize with 19 dead children, but they do it. But yet they leave out those poor people uh, in, in, in Chicago, in Portland, try to go to New York City. God help if you get on the subway. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right, we've all heard about the Durham report and uh, Clinton's involvement in it. And oh, I'm just wondering if anything will be done, if we'll be seeing her wearing orange jumpsuit anytime. The question was, we heard about the Durham report. Has anything will be done? Are we going to see Pelosi wearing uh, orange jumpsuit? No, no, no. Hillary. Hillary. You put both of them uh, the answer, the answer, uh, no, not now. Uh, if we get a speaker who again gets back to uh, speaker and who we elect as president, uh, but if we can just slow down the insanity that's going on, if we can stop it when we can, but slow it down, and get some people in this election cycle who will will, will be bold and will exercise their God-given right to speak up. Then we will, that I will be static if we do that. Because we will take the next step, and uh, and I think we can save the country. If we don't, as I mentioned earlier, where do we go? Name me a country. Mr. Rudder, for President 24. Who? Name me a country. 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 Name it's funny, he, you know, he, his endorsements, he, I will say this, there's a Trump fatigue out there. There's a Trump fatigue. People want somebody young, uh, particularly Biden, uh, but they want somebody young. DeSantis would be odds on. <clears throat> this country would be exciting. <laughs> now, I will say Trump is, and, and out of the 20, uh, well, I think he had a 70% win rate. Uh, on this last in the primaries, <laughs> but I think he's a general runner. And he'll clear the field because he can raise the money and he's got the money. Uh, and I think he loves the country enough. Yes. Now, the question is, and y'all will have to answer this will the people get behind it and will the people support him? We're going to have to bring the young people that are drag, you know, dragging and screaming, though, which is so frustrating because, again, like I said earlier, is he perfect? None of us are. No. He loves America. He did what he supported Israel. He got this country back uh, on a financial basis, which he would have done the second term. Was, he wasn't exactly as high uh, was, but he would be this next time. Uh, he's, he's mad. He's bitter. He just uh, he hates to lose. Uh, he's a fighter. That's how he is. In that respect, you said there were like, twice that they didn't have to have a Speaker of the House. That was a member of Congress? No. Yeah, uh, yeah, as a speaker, yeah, we, if, if, but, if the Speaker of the House, you got to. Did we look at Trump for that, maybe? People want it, we asked. Oh, we asked. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> that would be, be funny. That would be funny. That would be funny. That would be funny. That would be funny. Would he do it? Um, at the end of the day, probably because he, he 
in those yes. countries of God. Yes. But the other two that uh, that you will be ecstatic if you uh, if any of them, one of those two took it, yeah. and we're able to put it forward. Why don't you just tell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> them? these two people, you know, there you got it. I'm sure this is it. That was impressive here. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I don't care how to say anything out of line. I'll tell you, it uh, probably would be good at this time. But, you know, um, it, it starts with strong people, and I'm optimistic we're going to have it. Folks, y'all be great. Uh, thank, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you.